Greetings and welcome to the basement. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a basic little count up timer. And by basic, I do mean basic. Uh, this thing would need quite a few extra quality of life features added to it to make it truly game ready. What exactly do we have happening here? Well, let's say that for whatever reason, we need to keep track of how long our intrepid explorer has spent on this planet. And so we have a little in-world uh, canvas hovering over our explorer's head, showing how long she's been here. And let's say we further need to know at what time did she hit certain checkpoints. Pretty basic stuff. I already have everything all written, so I'm just going to go over the code and the setup. Now I've got two different canvases that I'm using. I have a world space canvas that I'm using to display the current time. I am not going to go in how to set up the canvases, by the way, in this video. That I have that in other videos. So I have a world space canvas set up to display the time over the uh, character model's head. And then I also have a overlay canvas set up to display the two checkpoint values. On the main character, because I need to access the colliders, I have the basic count up timer script with links into the various text components. Uh, this boolean here is for demonstration purposes. I'll talk about it in a moment. And then I also have a special little script that I will talk about on the time the time display canvas which is the local world space canvas to force it to always face the camera the so setup's pretty darn basic and simple let's take a look at the code i'm going to take a look at the math first before i deal with this strange esoteric formatting stuff i have up here Let's go down and update. Now, there's many different ways that you can handle this. This is not the one true way. I'm not even going to propose that this is the best way. It is just a way of keeping track of the time in terms of minutes, seconds, and centiseconds. And to do this, I am using time dot time since level load. This is a unity uh class here. Time is from the Unity namespace. And it does exactly what it says it does. It tracks the time in seconds since the level was last loaded. So how can we convert this to minutes, seconds? And yes, my variable name here is misnamed. I'm not tracking milliseconds. I'm tracking hundredths or centiseconds. Well, let's suppose for a moment that it has been 125 seconds and some change since uh, the level has been loaded. How can I convert this? Well, I know that there are 60 seconds to a minute. So if I divide my seconds by 60, I will get the number of minutes that I have. Of course, I don't want this huge uh, garbled number here. So I'm going to cast that result to an integer. This is C-sharp specific. This is very important to remember. But in C-sharp, when you cast a floating point to an integer, you lose the decimal. It doesn't round. It just drops the decimal. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking my time since level loaded, dividing by 60 to get my minutes and fraction of a minute and then casting it to an integer so that I just have the minutes. I am doing this in reverse for the seconds. Instead of division, I am using modular division, which is represented in C sharp as the percent operator. And modular division is concerned with just the remainder. And so if you, when working in just purely integers, if you have an integer mod a number, the result will always be zero to one less than that number. So if I have mod five, I am going to get a result between one and four. If I have mod 10, one and nine. Mod 69, 
between zero, and I said that wrong, it's zero, so it always starts at zero, zero to 59. You can never, if I have mod 60, I can never get 60 because, well, 60 divided by 60 is one with no remainder. So 60 mod 60, 120 mod 60, 180 mod 60, all of those are gonna give me zero. Now, since I am operating with floats here, I will get, again, this garbled mess of a leftover, which I don't want. So I will take my mod result and cast it to an integer, and that will give me five, because if I have 125, ignoring the decimal, divided by, or divided by 60, that's two with a remainder of five, which is what modular division gives me. So time since level, time since level load, mod 60, cast to an int, I have my number of seconds. My hundredths of a second is a bit more interesting. There's no one single clean operation I can do for that. So I've got my total amount of time. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to subtract out all of the seconds that I have. And the easiest way I have to do that is to subtract out the minutes. So however many minutes I calculated up here times two and then subtract out the seconds. And that is going to leave me with this fraction of a second. I can then take that fraction of a second and since I want two decimal places, multiply it by 100, round it to an integer, because this time I do want to round, I want to you know pay attention to what this number here is. So I'm gonna round it to an integer and that's going to give me an integer representation of the number of hundredths of seconds that I have spent in the level so far. And so again, here we go, here's the math now. This parentheses is important because order of operations. If I don't have that in there, this would be interpreted as time since level loaded minus the quantity minutes times 60 minus the quantity seconds times 100, which is most definitely not what we want. So in this particular case, the parentheses here are needed. And as far as the math goes, that is it. Logic for the checkpoints is pretty simple. I just uh, check to see uh, when have I entered a trigger. I check the name of the trigger, and if it was checkpoint one, then I do the exact same calculations I did up above and assign that string to checkpoint one info. Otherwise, if the name was checkpoint two, I assign it to checkpoint two info. And if it was any other trigger that I entered in, like say my water, I ignore it. Now that we've gone over the math, let's deal with this formatting. First, let's see what the formatting fixes. So here's the fixed formatting. I've got placeholder zeros where I don't have digits yet, and everything looks nice and so it's like, it looks like you would expect a timer. Here's what happens if I turn off that fix. My leading zero on my minutes disappears, and now every time my hundredths counter here goes back down to uh, single digits, it jumps because I no longer have that digit there. And if I fix my jumpy text, there we go. Everything is looking as it should. Now the purpose of this video is more about the timer than it is the string formatting. So I'm only going to do a very light coverage of string.format. It is a very useful thing to know how to use, so I strongly recommend going to the C-sharp documentation 
and reading up on string.format. Again, that is the C Sharp documentation, not Unity's. This is a C Sharp system level function. So what you do with string.format is you use this odd little curly bracket uh, syntax to display information. Well, actually, first, let's come down here, fix jumpy text. This is what you would probably most commonly write if you need to do a bunch of string concatenation, if you need to create a string dynamically, is you would take your minutes, and then you would add in the colon, and then you would add in the seconds, and then you add in the colon, and add in the hundredths, not milliseconds, so on and so forth. This is how you would normally build a string. But instead, I'm using string.format. This curly bracket format here is telling me which parameter am I going to stuff into this spot. So this curly bracket 0 is going to be replaced with the first parameter. Remember, computers, or at least C sharp, always starts counting at 0. And then the second parameter, and then the third parameter. And if we look down here on my string.format, here is the format string. First param <clears throat> excuse me, first parameter, second parameter, third parameter. At its most basic form, string.format, if I was to use, say, this particular string.format, it's a little bit more performant than doing a bunch of string concatenations. But that's not why we use it. The main reason why we use it is to do nonsense like this. Here, what I'm doing is I'm specifying, OK, here's the first parameter. And I want it to always take up reserve two spaces. And I always want it to show two digits. Same thing with the next parameter and the next parameter. There are a huge number of options that you can use with string.format between formatting time, formatting dates, formatting numbers and decimal points. Uh, it's a pretty big thing. Which is why I say go read the C Sharp documentation. Uh, <coughs> there is really a lot that needs to be covered there. And pardon me for the cough. There's not much else to say on this except for one last little thing, and that is that face camera. Because if you go through and do all of this and get the world space, you know, view set up, it's not going to look like mine did. Instead, it's probably going to look more like this. And normally this is going to be what you want for a world space canvas. For example, I've got my little locked message displaying on the screen on my uh, plane's cockpit over here. And I, you know, want that to remain as it is. I don't want that following the camera around. But for the timer on the head, yeah, I probably shouldn't be able to do this. But with this little script, doink, it works. And it's really obvious as to what it's doing. If I turn it back off and then move the camera again. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a very basic little thing. Yeah, that's it. That, that's all it is. All I am doing is I am telling my canvas, fixing my canvases forward to match the forward of the camera. Now there is just a little quick aside here. If I wanted this game object to look at the camera, which might be the case, say, in the you know, I've got an icon or something like that that I'm trying to show, then I would want to say negative. Because at the moment, you know, if I take a look at my world space canvas here, 
my forward, remember forward and unity is always the positive Z axis, forward is going this way, I want to be looking actually at the back side of this. Oddly enough, uh, you're always looking at the back side of UI elements. And so in this particular case, I want my, this canvas to be looking in the same direction as the camera. So that way it gives the illusion of it's always facing the player. So this, oops, and I forgot to check it. You know, since this is now always looking in the exact same direction as the camera, it's always perfectly facing the camera. There are times, however, when you're going to want to invert it. And that is all I have to say on doing a basic count up timer. If you found this video useful, learned a few new things, well, a like would be greatly appreciated. If you hated it and thought it was a waste of your time, well, the dislike button is right next to it. And I will talk to you all next time.